a phrase that's supposed to be in the rearview mirror by now. Well, far from it. The United Kingdom and the EU are still talking about changes to the arrangements for Northern Ireland. And Foreign Secretary Liz Truss is in the newspapers today saying she's going to take unilateral action and invoke Article 16 to rip up parts of the current agreement if they can't find a new solution. So, is there going to be a deal? And what happens if there isn't? The EU ambassador to the UK, Joao Valle de Almeida, joins me now. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Valle de Almeida. Um, do you think that there is a prospect uh, of uh, the Article 15 being invoked by the government uh, soon? Well, good morning, Trevor, or I should rather say Sir Trevor. Congratulations. Uh, uh, and, uh, and Happy New you're, Year you're to you. You're the first of my guests to tease me about it this morning. But on we go. Well, I think it's... Well deserved, well deserved, and uh, happy new year to you and all the, all the viewers and our friends in the United Kingdom. Listen, we, we heard this before from the government, so we are not uh, surprised, we are not too impressed, but we still believe it's not very helpful that we keep, uh, you know, agitating the issue of Article 16. Um, I think what we should focus on, at least that's where we are focused on, is trying to find solutions. Uh, for difficulties in the implementation of the protocol. But let me remind you, uh, Sir Trevor, of, of a very simple point. Uh, the problems arise and were uh, triggered by Brexit, not by the protocol. The protocol tries to mitigate the serious problems created in Northern Ireland by the Brexit and the kind of Brexit that, uh, that was chosen. So we are focused on solutions, invoking Article 16 or invoking issues which are not the core concern of citizens and business in Northern Ireland, and we have been listening to them very attentively. So doing Article 16 or enlarging the scope of problems is not going to contribute to find solutions. Uh, by the way, uh, Trevor is fine for this programme. Sir Trevor only happens when I have my horse with me. But uh, just coming back to the point in hand, um, do you th don't you think that uh, essentially, the clock is ticking here. Liz Truss is going to meet the uh, uh, leader in Northern Ireland, Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, this week. And at some point soon, we are going to have to have a solution. Is it time for everybody to get their skates on and start uh, in bringing forward some new compromises? Absolutely. We, we, we need a new momentum in these talks and we are eager to reconnect with the British government, now with the Foreign Secretary and looking forward to meetings uh, in a few days in, in, in Britain. And uh, we are eager to reconnect, but we are even more eager uh, to find compromises uh, because we need to move on. It's been too long. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, we have listened attentively to Sir Geoffrey and many other leaders, uh, to all the leaders actually, in Northern Ireland. We have engaged with the civil society, we have engaged with business. My first official visit out of London was to Northern Ireland. Vice President Shevchkovich, who is the interlocutor of Liz Truss, has been there as well as in, in con constant contact. We identified the problems and in October we put forward a very ambitious package of measures that deals with all the main issues, the core concerns, the difficulties in implementing the protocol. We now want this to be fully discussed, and I hope that, uh, we, at least we expect that from the British government, to reciprocate on our offer of October and, and get down to uh, concrete, practical uh, solutions. That's, that's our spirit, that's our approach, that's our mindset as we approach and we prepare for the meetings in the, in the coming days. Uh, there, of course, is another um, event approaching that will put new pressure on these negotiations, and that is uh, that there will be elections to the Stormont Assembly in May. And in practice, uh, when this gets mixed up with uh, politics, uh, does that, is that likely to make the negotiation even more complicated? I don't want to comment on the internal situation of, of a third country, uh, which I, well, I proudly represent the European Union, but I can tell you that we've been, we are in close contact with all uh, the political leaders in Northern Ireland, directly or, or virtually, uh, on a very regular basis, and I think we fully understand all the elements of the complexity of the situation in Northern Ireland. The, the European Union has been committed for a long time to peace and prosperity in Northern Ireland. We were there since the beginning of the Good Friday Belfast Agreement and we remain 
absolutely committed to guarantee peace and uh, security and prosperity in Northern Ireland. And actually, if I may, uh, Trevor, uh, highlight one point. The protocol provides a huge opportunity for Northern Ireland. Just remember that this is the only territory in the world that has access to both the United Kingdom market, but also to uh, half a billion people market, which is the single market of the European Union. So the only territory in the world. So this gives Northern Ireland citizens, Northern Ireland business, a perspective for job creation, for foreign investment, for European investment, but also, I understand, Canadian, American investors are very interested, provided we uh, guarantee that there is predictability uh, and uh, security and stability in Northern Ireland. I think the protocol creates the conditions for that against the background of a Brexit that created enormous problems for Northern Ireland. We had to square the circle together with our British friends. It took a long time. Now we have the protocol, which is international law, British law, EU law. We want to implement it with pragmatism, with a certain degree of flexibility. Uh, and that's what we're talking about, and that's what we should talk about in the coming days and weeks. And I share the idea that we need a new momentum. And I hope that the meeting we're having in Chivening uh, this week with uh, the Foreign Secretary will inject a new momentum into these negotiations. That's our hope and that's our commitment. May, may I turn to a rather different challenge uh, to the EU and foreign uh, affairs, and that is, of course, the fact that dozens of protesters and 12 police officers, at least we think, have died in uh, ongoing violence in Kazakhstan. Russia has sent troops across the border. Um, how worried is the EU about Russian incursion into its neighbours? Well, it's good that you mentioned Russia. It's good that you mentioned the situation in, uh, in Kazakhstan, because this is one area of security in our neighbourhood. This is one area where the EU and the UK can do a lot together. And my, my, my sense in looking at the, the wider picture is that the sooner we move on from uh, you know, issues that are still open related to Brexit, and particularly the Northern Ireland situation, the sooner we move on from that, uh, the better equipped we will be, the EU and the UK, to work together in addressing very serious issues. Uh, I but can but refer what can to you do? Mr Putin Ukraine. is not... Um... Yeah. Mr. Putin doesn't do much uh, uh, responding to warm words, does he? I mean, what can you actually do to stop well, him I doing think, this kind I think, of thing? I think, uh, uh, you know, I was in Liverpool in the, in the G7 Foreign Affairs Ministers, chaired by, by Lee Strauss, and uh, we together agreed a very strong uh, uh, statement. Uh, the, the European Union and member states have a very common position of strength. The United States is together. The NATO allies are together. And we are saying very clearly, uh, and these are very clear words, that there will be massive consequences and severe cost if Russia uh, adventures into, into Ukraine Could with military action. And, and this is a very, very solid and unified position among ourselves. As you know, Here's... today, tomorrow, the days after, there will be important okay. diplomatic uh, initiatives okay. taking place. I uh, forgive me to interrupt you, but, but massive consequences, that's, that's a good phrase. Would one massive consequence be for the EU to say to Mr Putin, if you keep on like this, you can forget about Nord Stream 2? and that flow of revenue from oil and gas into Western Europe? I don't think we should anticipate action. Uh, we should react when action takes place. What we're doing now is trying to de-escalate, using all the diplomatic tools and avenues that are available. If ever uh, Russia uh, moves into other direction, uh, they can be sure that there will be a unified response from our side. And let me give you uh, this also as an example of, of the need for us to move on in okay. our bilateral relationship, because yes. we, are, we share the same values, right. we share the same strategic interests, and there's a lot we need to do regarding our neighbourhood, but also regarding oh. Iran, where we have a very clear a joint position with the UK, our relationship uh, okay. with other parts of the world. Thank you. And a cooperation with the US. So it's a long list. I'm uh, uh, and he's awaiting a better climate in Ambassador, our relationship. Thank you. Ambassador, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much.